Hi everyone, this is Johnny Odoz, and I'm playing Starbound version 1.0, and in this Let's Play episode, we're going to build our final armor, as well as start to scout out where we want to put our colony. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I've got. I'm naked for a reason. Um, I've got all of the uh, second to last tier armors listed out here, so we can take a look at what the differences are. So each one of the... So this is the... Uh, let me see. Kill this guy real quick. So I think this is the ranged one. The ranged one is called the Accelerator add-on. So it's got that green color using Agisalt. And then the Manipulator is the uh, Ferrosium, which is the blue color. And this one is called High-Tech Combat Equipment and Armor to the Replicator. Doesn't really give you high-tech combat equipment. That's all you kind of get from it. And uh, then the last one is called the Separator, which is a mod module that adds additional melee equipment and armor to the replicator. So um, that's all three of them. And if you look at the armor from each of, this is the second to last tier of, of uh, each one of these, and you can see the difference between them. So this one has 50%, and uh, the blue one has more damage. The top one has more health. So purple gives you more health, Blue gives you more damage, and obviously the green color will give you additional energy. But they all have the same defense across the board, so 37.5 and 22.5, so the defense is, is the same across the board. The only difference is health is doubled, and then in this one, the damage is increased by about 15%, and this one... You get about, you know, even more than 100% energy. So I tend to stick with the green one. But why I've created all three of these is I wanted to then create all three of the last tier of armor. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So this is the, um, the accelerator tables. I'm going to list them out just like we did over here. It looks like he's putting it on. So one, for picking out what, what the best armor for us is. And two, for picking out the best looking armor for the aesthetic piece. So here we got the Aphopic, Aphopic, Aphotic, Aphotic, Aphotic fin, Aphotic trousers. There we go with that. Oh, my pronunciations are just always spot on. All right, one more. We should have enough uh, solarium for all of this. I'm thinking that this one is the one I'm going to stick with for uh, the looks. We'll see why. Look at that, like Shredder helmet. Finally heading back to the Japanese aesthetics. One that I have on currently looks like anime aesthetics, but that's all right. All right, so let's keep this going in the same fashion. Uh, where's the purple? There it is. Looks like they changed the colors on me here. All right, so let's look at the stats on each one of these. I love this sideways rain. So this is uh, 45 energy. And the damage is not that much different. So the base is 90% damage. The increased damage one gives you, looks like 18%. 18% damage. Then the health one gives you, uh, let's look at the breastplates instead. Uh, that's, that's a lot better. It gives you 30% more damage on the breastplates across the board. The base is 150%. And then for the energy one, you get 75%, and the rest you get 30. So that's 45 energy more than you get for the, um, the manipulator one, or the accelerator one. And then for health, you get 30 as base, and the, the top one is 60 health. So I'm definitely going to be sticking with the blue one. But let's see which one looks the best. So this one has got like an anime and a feel to it, anime robot feel to it. Looks pretty neat. It's got like the little glass helmet. Yeah, 
Let's see what this one looks like. What? I think this was the last tier armor for the um, Boydles in the very beginning of the uh, when the game was first released. Yeah, like that cool like uh, splinter cell like like uh, night vision goggles, but for Hoidel with the three eyes. So that one looks uh, looks just a little bizarre. Let's go ahead and remove that one. Then we have this one. So you look like samurai, purple samurai of death, and it actually goes well with these wings because the little emblem at the top is the same color as the wings, so it looks pretty cool. I think I'm going to stick with this, you know, the black, purple, and gold look. That'll be cool. I think this is what we're going to roll with. Uh, just to let you know, uh, the weapons that you get, so you get three different weapons for it. You get an Agisol bow, which I guess is a, a, a better hunting bow? So let's see, what's the requirements for this? Not too bad, so let's build it. This is the first bow I've ever made in the game so far, which happens to be the last bow. Uh, for this one, you get a Ferrisium Staff. Looks like we're going to have to build another battery. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like we have to build another battery here. Yep. Let's see that. Then this one is a broadsword, two-handed weapon. Special is flip slash. Let's take a look at those. All right, so here's the staff. Let's do the staff first. Got like a ruby tip to, to it. Whoa, that's kind of cool, actually. Let's um, let's beam over to that. The high level planet and see how these do. We're gonna find something to fight. Alright, so here's the staff. Oh, here we go. We got our annoying little rock people here. Alright, so each sword is basically used when it, it connects with something. It's kind of neat looking. I can't tell how much damage each one is doing, but it takes them out. It's just a little on the slow side. Let's see what the special is. The special is called Horse Cage. And I don't know if this is something for you to wrap around yourself, but it looks like you can't get around that thing. Let's. I guess it just blocks the way of uh, something that's fighting you. Let's see if it does damage. Nope. Oh, cool. It does keep things inside of it, so that's pretty useful. But, um, this attack is just a Oh, I have to direct it. I don't know. It seems kind of neat, but, um, probably could do without it. Let's try the bow here now. It works exactly like a regular bow. Oh, and it looks like it goes straight. There's no arc to it. That's kind of cool. I want to do like massive amounts of meat gathering. It's about half damage to one of these rock critters. A little under half. But I'm guessing this would be a pretty cool item to use to collect a lot of the, um, what is it called? The life roots. Let's see how it does on this thing. A lot more than half. Leather. Some meat from this one. Yep, that's pretty good. So, if I want to get a lot of meat, at least I got a super awesome bow to do it. Now, let's try this sword here. Definitely want to see what the special looks like. Where's the weapon? Oh, it's a laser sword. Very cool. Oh, that's awesome. And it takes very little energy. Can't do it in the air, unfortunately. Let's see, we get yeah, we get a three, um, we get an overhead swing, and then two stabs, an inward stab, and then another stab. Very much like the um, the other legendary weapon that I have. Same kind of overhead swing, stab, stab. 
Yeah, those are those are all the super high end uh, weapons, and yeah, that that one does a 145 points of damage per swing. I do like the fact that it the blade comes out like a lightsaber type thing. Yeah, this one does a little less damage, but I wonder how much damage this um it's cool like flip. Uh, the flip slash thing does. I don't know, that's pretty cool. It hits multiple times, but you get hit by... Oh, I haven't seen that creature before. Oh. But you're still taking contact damage, so I don't know. It looks really cool, feels really cool, but the blade itself is just a little too short when compared to this legendary unique weapon, but then again, it's a legendary unique weapon, so I would imagine it's a lot better than something that you can craft. But doing 145 damage to stuff is too good to let go. It's just kind of sad that the ranged weapon isn't an actual weapon, it's more of a hunting tool than anything else. Anyways, so now we've tested all the weapons, we've tested the armor. Uh, it's definitely, definitely worthwhile to pick up this last tier of weaponry and, uh, armor just to see what's going on with it this is gonna go rotten anyways so let's go ahead and just eat it let's go back to the farm and see what else we need to build and then we're gonna go and look for a magma planet we're gonna try to aim for a magma planet that's really small and then we're gonna go explore it to see if there's any points of interest on it the, the target that we're looking for is we're looking for a small planet that has as few of points of interest as we possibly can. That way, um, that way we can get a colony that the colonists will only request particular um, quests from each other instead of uh, like saying, "Oh, my friend is in this ruins to the east." You know, we want to we want to keep it keep the quests as close to home as possible. That way, they're faster for us to be able to accomplish. So I think the only the only annoying quest would be the ones that require particular ore. So we would just make sure we have the ore handy and not smelt it. Like make sure we have like 10 of each ore, not smelt it, and then we have a ton of the ingots so that we just hand them the ingots. Um, and then of course the farming ones uh, will be difficult uh, until we get our, our high-end farm going. Which we'll have to collect a lot of Durasteel for, for the sprinklers. And I think that was the item that I was talking about. Let me take a look. So sprinklers, yes, so gold is a component of the sprinkler. So gold and Durasteel are important. As you can see, my Durasteel cache is a little bit low. It doesn't look like I've collected a lot of gold either, but um, we focus on those two components, or those two resources. We should be able to acquire them relatively quickly. So let's go and spend some money. We got 48,000 pixels right now. Still haven't died, so that's nice. Uh, there's a high probability that I will die on the lava planet when we start building, just by getting melted away or me, me panicking and then falling into the lava. So there's a good possibility of that happening. So let's um, let's go ahead and drop all the stuff that's in our resources tab here as well as any upgrade modules that we might have. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, any upgrade modules, there we go. We are completely done now with the MM. I upgraded the whole thing. So the expansion slot, we have wires, we have paint. Uh, we're, we're really raring to go there. Um, and we can probably drop this armor that we're not using at all, as well as these I'm going to keep the bow just in case I want to start doing a lot of uh, hunting and getting a lot of metal. We got our sword, we got our missile launcher, and we have our sniper. That's our kind of generic three weapons that we have right now. It's funny that I picked a character that does a lot of, uh, you know, uh, energy related and range related, uh, you know, attacks, but I'm, I'm kind of sticking to the sword, so I might actually swap this armor out uh, for the the other one that I just threw in. But either way, let's go ahead and start looking for a small, a small magma planet. So this is a volcanic planet. 
So we've got a, a whole system of fiery, um, fiery stars here. All right, this is looks like a very large, those six thousand sectors of magma here. So let's um, keep looking around here. This is a four thousand sector magma planet. So let's just add a uh, bookmark here, maybe question mark. If we can find a gas giant, this one, sometimes they have smaller planets uh, orbiting it. This is the 6,000. Not the one we want. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's four, another 4,000 one. I think the only way we're going to find a... Oh, we also need to make sure that the threat is inconceivable, which I think is the top tier. Pretty sure that's the top tier. Yeah. We got a really small scorched planet. It's a 4,000. I don't know if 4,000 is the smallest. But let's just find a gas giant that's got some stuff around it. There's another gas giant. 6,000. Don't look like there's any gas giants on this one. I'm trying to see if there's like a 2,000 sector planet. We got the gas giant. Okay. So it looks like 3,000 is the smallest it can go if it's, it's it's orbiting this gas giant here. And 4,000 if it's not or if it's orbiting the sun. So I'm going to go ahead and oh, I might have nope. It's 3,000. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go speed up time here until I find one that works for us, and then we'll go explore it. All right, so we found a planet that I'm gonna take a look at. Um, I haven't really had, I haven't found a planet that's orbiting a gas giant that is magma. Um, a lot of the volcanic planets that I found that were were orbiting a gas giant had uh, not just luminous rain, but it had like meteors and gigantic meteors. I definitely don't want to have to deal with that when uh, building a base. So let's head on over to this planet and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and get ourselves a boat and we're gonna check, just check for any um, points of interest on it. And then, uh, if we don't find any points of interest, then we're definitely going to start building. So let's fly on over to this planet. And uh, it was funny, like my uh, my engine got upgraded halfway through that. And uh, it went from 350 to 264 uh, fuel to be used. So it's really nice to have that engineer on board to lower the amount of fuel you use. So let's see what this looks like get something to eat while we travel on over there running a little bit low on food here I think that was the last bit of food that we can actually eat the rest is just kind of stuff waiting to be cooked I mean we can eat that but we have to eat everything to get fill filled again all right home sweet home so let's head over to the hub and buy ourselves a boat A green boat controller 25,000 pixels zoom on back to the ship then let's see if we uh, actually I'll just go ahead and uh, go ahead and stop this episode here and then when we get down there um, or on the next episode we'll go ahead and search the planet and see what we can see oh looking good so far Getting some chili. Kill this guy. Just don't want to get pushed out into the lava here. Yep. That's all lava there, guys. So let's um, equip this here. 
Get on our little boats. Away we go. All right, folks. So this is the end of this episode. Uh, thanks so much for watching. This is Johnny Ono's playing Starbound 1.0. In the next episode, we'll go ahead and search this planet and see if uh, there's any points of interest. If there, if there are, then uh, we'll have to find another planet. And there was a couple that I saw. There were 4,000 sectors. So, um, so yeah. All right. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.